Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me on the summit today is Tony Hobson, who is the head women's basketball coach at Fort Hayes State. Coach, uh, you just won the regular season championship in the, M- in the MIAA. Northwest Missouri, your final game, that was a victory, 70-47 to this past weekend. Mm-hmm. And congratulations on that regular season title. Well, thank you. It's uh, I'll tell you what, our, our conference is, is, a, is a tough one, so the the conference title really means a lot in in this league uh and and this, this year everything was conference games we started out the year and we had a 22 game schedule everything in conference there was no warm up games no no nothing and then our our first two games got postponed because of covid so uh it got off to kind of a funny start but uh, it's been a it's been a great year and and like we started out 5 and 2 in conference and and uh, have a 15-game winning streak to to finish with 20 wins. So it's a pretty special year for us right now. Yeah, let's talk about that. The Tigers are number five in the country according to the WBCA Division II rankings. You mentioned 20 wins, 20 and two on the season, 10 and one at home, 10 and one on the road. Nice little symmetry there as Perfect. well. Uh, but talking about playing in a in a league like the MIAA, these 20 wins that ties a conference record for. Uh, league wins. What does something like that mean then playing in the MIAA? And then of course, as you mentioned, also navigating the COVID protocols along the way. Well, it's, uh, you know, I think most years, um, I would say teams that win the conference, a lot of times have three or four losses and it's, it's just tough to navigate through with the, with the travel. We, we have a couple of, uh, six and a half to seven hour trips, um, so we're on the road uh, since Christmas. We've been on the road four times uh, for four days to play two games. So just you you couple that in with just the competition that you see once you get there. Uh, you know, when you say such and such is a tough place to play, it usually depends on the team you're seeing uh, when you get there. It isn't necessarily the building. So we just we just have a very competitive league and. Uh, to, to win 20 games in a, a year like this uh, when you only have 22 scheduled is is uh, pretty extraordinary really for for this team uh, we lost four senior starters last year so we had uh, a lot of new kids coming in uh, luckily we had a couple uh, actually three uh, come back with with some experience to kind of get us through the tough times and uh, we've really gelled at the at the correct time to this point. I want to give you a chance now to talk about some of those players we're visiting with Tony Hobson, who is the head women's basketball coach at Fort Hayes State here on the summit today. And please do consider subscribing to the channel, Midwest Sports Net. Coach Hobson in his 13th season at Fort Hayes and 29th season overall, 693 wins, Coach. I mean, uh, headed for another milestone real soon. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about those players now. And, and I know they're the ones who get things taken care of you on the court. Jaden Hobbs, a senior, and she just crossed the 1,000-point plateau. Fellow senior in Whitney Randall and a high school teammate as well, instrumental in getting Hobbs to Hayes uh, mm-hmm. a little while back. 996 points for her career. So you figure that's uh, probably just one game away from crossing that 1,000 point plateau as well I know you've had quality play throughout your roster to be able to have a a season like you've had I mean you know Olivia Hollenbeck she's a freshman she's well pretty much the future is now (laughs) in in a player like her but Mm -hmm. you also have Sydney Bergman and Katie Wagner and others but I'd like you to to mention Hobbs and, and Randall and the impact that those two players have had well they're just I mean it's uh hard to describe I know we couldn't replace them um Jaden is a just a, a pure point guard that just happens to be able to score if she needs to. Uh, she takes a, a lot of pleasure in just passing the ball. Uh, she leads the league in assists uh, by so far that uh, nobody's really close. She's averaging uh, six a game and uh, just just likes to set people up and get people easy baskets. Our, our two freshman post players, uh, they they love her because she gives them the ball, and there's just uh, there's just nothing selfish about her about her play. Uh, she's a she's a great scorer when she needs to be, um, but she is. Uh, you know, you have that that saying where uh, 
a rising tide lifts all all boats or or whatever she raises the tide for our game she she just elevates everybody around her and um just just as a, a great player um Whitney is is just so explosive offensively that uh, they're they're a good a good tandem uh, because uh, she runs the floor. Jaden gets her the ball in the open floor a lot for for easy baskets. Uh, she's really developed her three point shot since she's since she's came to college. I guess uh, Jaden tells me she wasn't allowed to shoot threes in high school. Uh, she was surprised when she she got here and and Whitney was uh, taking threes. Uh, but she's a good three-point shooter. Uh, she can score in in a variety of ways. She can pull up. She can post up. She can shoot three. So it makes her a hard matchup for a four-man. And she is our leading scorer. So um, the things Whitney has brought us just this year, her, her rebounding has elevated. Her defense has elevated. Uh, just, you know, I don't know if she felt like, you know, I need to do this, so I guess I will <laughs> or, or what. But uh, – She's she's definitely uh, definitely improved this year, and they're both having both having great years for us. And when you lose so many starters, I think number one, there's there's two ways that you have a chance to survive, and that's your kids returning need to improve or not get worse, and then you better you better recruit some kids that can come in and play right away. And and we were able to do uh, both of those things. And it seems to have, have worked out well to this point. Again, twenty and two on the season. You talked about the fact that since that uh, since that five and two start, the team's on a fifteen game winning streak. And I, I think that's something I'd, I'd I'd like to hear from you about too. You know, those two losses to ranked teams at the time, Emporia State, Central Missouri, mm-hmm. both quality teams, and then now fifteen in a row since then. And and I I want to hear your perspective from looking at it on the outside. I remember right in the middle of it uh, that seemed uh, to be some statement games. When you got the wins against Nebraska Kearney and at two days separating those two wins, one at Kearney, one at Hayes, uh, Kearney the number four team in the country at the time, those to me felt like statement wins and and really a, a place where you could just push on head through the rest of the season. Talk about your perspective. Well, the, the two games we lost right after Christmas, um, the first game here against Emporia, we lost by one, and, and we, had a, we had a real good shot at the buzzer to beat, it, to beat them and, and just missed it, um, that we would probably make that shot 70% of the time. But we were missing uh, Madison Mitty at that time from, from uh, COVID, um, who is a, a key player for us and, and now in the starting lineup since, since we've had some injuries. Um, and then the following game, when we went to central Missouri and, and lost by seven, we were missing, uh, Madison and we were missing Emma Ruddle, uh, from, from the same thing. So everybody in our conference went through something like that almost through the year. They were missing a key player here, or there, or, or somebody was quarantined or, or, or whatever. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating, stating facts. Um, but we went I, I think our little our little run and our little just I think we kind of realized how good we might be or could be when we went on our road trip to Missouri Southern and Pitt State. We we had a, a good game at Missouri Southern. It's a hard place to play, and they're they're a good team. That's who we play tomorrow night, and we beat them by twenty one on their floor, uh, a real physical game, and then turned around two days later and went to Pitt State, who at the time. Uh, was in fourth place and and a very explosive team and I think we shot sixty eight percent the first half and and we were so good that game for for so long um, that 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 kind of propelled us into the next week against Carney so we came home and then and then we're playing Carney in a in a postponed makeup game on Tuesday so we we go up there um, against a good team a good defensive team. Uh, they've got size and they're they're really long on the perimeter, uh, hard to score on. And uh, during in the third quarter, I think with four minutes left, we're up twenty one and just playing great. And they made a run at us at the end, but we ended up winning by twelve, I think. And then we're we're just trying to hope we can kind of replicate that for Saturday. And and uh, you know it was it was more down to the wire type of game, but we we ended up beating them by eight. And those two. 
I think that two weeks right there just kind of set the tone. And I'm not sure for those two weeks if anybody could have beat us. I mean, we were just playing at a, at a level, shooting the ball well and playing really enthusiastic on the defensive end and rebounding. And and, and that kind of kind of propelled us uh, into the next into the next month, really. And uh, we've had some games where we haven't played great, but we've done enough to to win them, and uh, just kind of just kind of move on to the next one and prepare for that. Well, coach, as we wrap up our time, I, I and you may have already answered this question. <clears throat> then, as as we come toward the the postseason on Wednesday night at six p.m., you all will take on Missouri Southern. You mentioned that, and uh, you all are the top seed, top overall seed. So. Uh, with the tournament being the way it is now and games being played on uh, host school sites, uh, you have the potential then to host all three games in the MIAA Women's Basketball Tournament this season. Uh, tell us a little bit about the potential then. And I know you're, you you have to take one game at a time. And I know, Coach, sure. I don't want to take you out of that yeah. <laughs> at all. <laughs> one right. game at a time. But, you know, the, the potential to make a postseason run. Well, I, I just think it's a, it's a great year to win the conference because this is the first time that – a a school gets to host it uh, in these circumstances. Usually we're in Kansas City, so this is as good a year as any to win it. Um, we don't have to travel. It should be a, a, it should be a slight advantage to, uh, to be at home. It's not as much, I, I don't think, as people think because you have so many added distractions when you're, when you're at home um, as opposed to on the road where you're just kind of in your little bubble, uh, in your motel, at the gym, getting, getting ready. Um, but it's it's a great thing for our community because now they don't uh, they don't have to travel to Kansas City. I think some people will be able to come to our tournament games that wouldn't have been able to come before. They would have maybe watched it on on uh, the computer. Um, I I just wish that we were hosting it and we could have our our regular crowd. I mean, twenty five percent for us is still 16, 1700 because we have a, a large venue that seats almost 7,000. Um, but it's a, it's a lot quieter when people are yelling with masks on. And, and if it, <laughs> if it wasn't for the 25%, we would have, uh, you know, we would have four or 5,000 people here for these games because we draw such good crowds. So in, in a way it's, it's a, it's still a good deal. Um, we're looking forward to it. And we, we just need to, you know, it does add a little pressure like, hey, you're the one seed, you get a host. Uh, don't be messing this up and getting beat the first round. Um, our people here, our administrators, they do not want to, they don't want to put on games Saturday and Sunday if we're not involved. So my job's probably on the line here. <laughs> All right. Well, coach, then I, I wish success to you then uh, with that, with, with that in mind, uh, Wednesday, 6 p.m., Fort Hay State hosting Missouri Southern in what is uh, you know one of the one of the best facilities in Division Two in Gross mm -hmm. Memorial and and I know that you'd like to have more fans there but uh, the uh, the Hayes faithful I'm sure will be watching yeah. as as well as they can from whatever venue or whatever uh, way they can watch you all play this season a fantastic season so far Coach Tony Hobson thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit and again success to you for the remainder of the year. You bet. Well, thank you, Joey. I really appreciate uh, your interest.